Hello, everyone. Matt Clark here, research analyst with Money Markets. I've got your weekly stock power podcast. Now, today's power stock is a great play on the growth of the steel industry. It scores a 97 on our stock power rating system. But first, I want to I want to kind of address the elephant in the room here, and that is that the market remains relatively turbulent. There's ups, there's downs. We've seen nice highs. The Dow closed uh, in its best month in in quite some time in October. But now, in in in, in this week, we've seen more ups and we've seen downs. Uh, we're still not out of the woods yet. Now, I want to make sure you're visiting moneyandmarkets.com every day. Uh, this is where Adam, Charles, myself, and our entire team uh, work very diligently to provide you safe, sound, smart, simple, and adaptable investment information each and every day of the week. You can check out my Stock Power Daily, where Monday through Friday, I'm going to give you that one highly rated stock according to our Stock Power rating system that you should consider. And on, on some occasions, I'm going to tell you about those low rated stocks that may seem attractive or maybe getting a lot of headlines in the news, but aren't worthy of your investment time uh, right now. So we use that. It's a very powerful tool. Uh, and, and you can use it as well at moneyandmarkets.com. And it's all for free. If you go to the top right, top right hand corner of our website, you'll see a search bar, just type in a ticker or company name, uh, and you can uh, pull down the ratings, uh, any analysis that we have, also a ton of other information. It's all right there at your fingertips for free at moneyandmarkets.com. Now let's get after in today's podcast. It is the most commonly used metal in the world. It, it's used to build buildings. It's used to manufacture cars. Uh, it's essential to even make surgical scalpels that surgeons use uh, when they're performing medical procedures. Uh, and the metal is steel. Steel is widely used because it's relatively cheap, it's strong, and it can be used over and over without losing its strength. So there's a lot of great properties here related to steel. And in this episode of the Stock Power Podcast, I'm going to share with you a 97 rated power stock that manufactures and recycles steel and other metal products. Uh, it, it's sort to, the soaring heights for steel demand it, it continues to grow. We've seen this uh, over the last decade where the use of steel just continues to grow and grow and grow. Uh, again, it is the most commonly used metal. It's used to make automobiles, aircraft, construction, uh, refrigerators, washers and dryers, surgical scalpels. You can look around your house right now. In fact, do that. Look around your house right now or just look around you anywhere. And you can see steel used in any number of products, whether it be in your house or maybe you're listening to this while you're jogging or in the park or uh, in your car. You can look around, you can see steel used just about everywhere. And again, the beauty of it is, is that it can be recycled over and over again, and it doesn't lose its strength. So if you recycle steel, say two or three times, the strength of that, of that steel recycled is just as strong as the steel was when it was originally manufactured. And that's the beauty of it. So you can recycle it, make it cheaper, and it's just as strong as it was from day one. Using our stock power rating system, I found a company that not only makes steel, uh, but also recycles it for global consumption. Uh, it earns a strong bullish 97 on our stock power rating system. It just raked in record revenues in the last quarter, and it's trading at a new 52-week high this week. Now, the biggest use of steel, uh, really by number, is in the construction industry. It's because of its strength and its obvious low cost to produce. So it makes it a very easy metal and a very cheap metal, a very cheap product to use to build buildings, apartment complexes, uh, houses, uh, any number of things. You can drive down a highway and you can see any construction project, they're basically, they're using steel in some form or fashion. Uh, and the pro and the, mod um, the market for structural steel is projected to reach even higher highs in coming years. Now, the chart I'm showing you here shows the actual and estimated size of the global structural steel market. In 2019, that market value was around 297 point, 290 rather, 0.7 billion dollars. By 2026, uh, Global Market Insights projects that market to grow by 73.3%. That's massive growth in seven years. Seven years, 73.3% growth. And in this episode of the Stock Power Podcast, I'm going to share with you a way to play on that growth and also maybe bring home a, a slight, not a massive, but a slight dividend on top of it all. Now, today's stock I'm going to talk about is Commercial Metals Company. It trades on the New York Stock Exchange. Its ticker symbol is CMC. It's Commercial Metals Company, CMC. CMC is a $5.3 billion company. It manufactures and markets steel and metal products. In addition, it also recycles steel for use primarily in North America and Europe. It's headquartered in Texas, but it operates a steel mill and fabrication facility in Poland, which is where it can easily branch out and supply companies in Europe uh, with its steel products. CMC scores a 97 on our proprietary stock power rating system means we're strong bullish on the stock. We do expect it to beat the market by at least three times over the next 12 months. It scores an 82 on momentum, which is relatively strong. And I'm going to get to that in just a second. But I do want to focus on the value and growth of this stock. Let's start with value. Now, as you can see from the chart I'm showing you here, CMC is considered undervalued compared to its metal products industry peers. Its price to earnings ratio is 4.57. The industry average is right around 6.37. And on top of that, CMC 
Lucy's price to cash flow ratio is half, nearly half its peer average. Now, remember, when you're looking at these averages, uh, when you're looking at a company compared to either another company or an industry, uh, you want the company number that you're looking to invest in to be lower if you're looking for a value stock. It doesn't mean that higher higher ratios are bad. It just means that in terms of bang for your buck, uh, and you're looking if you're looking for value in terms of a stock, the lower the number, the better. And here, CMC ticks those boxes pretty nicely. Uh, it's, the stock does score a 97 on our value factor. It's also a very strong quality stock to boot. CMC blows the doors off of its peers in terms of quality. The company's return on equity is almost four times higher than its industry peers, and the same is for its net margin. And it all suggests that CMC's management knows how to turn a profit and keep that profit going. Now, unlike value, when you look at quality, you want higher numbers for the company that you're looking to invest. It means that its return on assets, its equity, its investment, its margins, you want those to be higher than industry averages because it tells you that management is able to turn profits based on its assets, its equity, and any investments that it tends to make. And its profit margin, uh, you also want to be strong, both operating net and even gross profit margins. You want those to be larger than industry averages as well. And here, again, CMC does tick those boxes. Now, I want to get into the price uh, of the stock. Over the last 12 months, CMC stock is up about 43.9% and is trading right around a 52-week high. And it is showing maximum momentum that we love to see in stocks. Again, I like to see a sustained uptrend in stocks. I mean, one or two days is not necessarily sustainable. Uh, but when we see something that lasts weeks, then we start to see something that is a little bit more tenable in terms of maximum momentum. And CMC is definitely providing that right now. The S&P 500, on the other hand, as a chart I'm showing, is down 14.8% over the same period. And just for added reference, the metal products industry is only averaging a 3.2% gain over the last 12 months. So you have CMC, which is up almost 44%. Uh, the S&P is down almost 15%. And the metal products industry is right around three, is relatively flat, 3.2%. So if you look at that all on a chart, you're going to see that CMC is vastly outperforming, not just the broader market, but also its peers. And the revenue growth for the company is also very strong. Uh, CMC did suffer a slight decline during the COVID pandemic because we just weren't building as much because we were all locked down in our houses. But the uh, the company roared back in 2021. And this year, the company's revenue exploded to $8.9 billion. That's a 32.4% growth from last year, not from 2020 from the low, but from just last year where it already had gained off of its COVID low. So I see no reason why CMC is not going to continue this uptrend in its revenue. I think it's going to be, it's going to maybe tick up a little higher, maybe maybe a little flat, but it's still going to maintain a very high level of revenue. And I like that. Uh, and again, steel is the most widely used metal in the world. It's used for construction, for cars, you name it. Again, look around, just look around wherever you're at, whether you're listening to this or watching a video, look around. Even if you're watching this from a computer, there are components inside of it that are made from steel. So steel is everywhere. And, and, and this is a great way. CMC, I think, is a great way to play on the growing demand for steel. It not only makes it, but it also recycles it. So there's a lot of potential here. Uh, and I see a lot of uptrend and uh, growth potential. Uh, it's a great value right now. So we've got both, both, both growth and value, which is great to see uh, in a stock to recommend. So I really think CMC is definitely worth your time to look at for your portfolio. Now, let's move on to last week's YouTube poll question. Stocks are trying to climb out of the bear market, uh, but continue to struggle. We're seeing that as I record this. Stock market was down after posting uh, two days of, of, of either flat or high. Uh, so it's really struggling to make uh, to make end roads and try to break out of this bear market. So we thought we'd ask uh, our, our viewers if you thought this was the end of the bear market. Now, overwhelmingly, 73% who voted said this, this is nothing more than just a bear market rally uh, and, and that we weren't out of the woods yet. Only 9% of those who voted believed uh, that the bear market was officially over. So we're so most of you think that we're really not there yet. And I tend to agree. I don't think we're there yet. I think we're going to see a little bit more pain. I'm kind of with Adam and Charles on this. Uh, I, I don't think we're out of the woods yet. Uh, we also had some comments, some interesting ones. Donald said, more stocks are bullish than bearish, but most stocks are trading sideways. Employment numbers are good. Yes, they are. And this does kind of work in contrary to what the Fed is trying to do in terms of trying to curb all that with with uh, with uh, with uh, interest rate hikes. So we have a lot of moving parts here. Uh, Ted and Linda commented that world fundamentals are not good. This is also a valid point. Uh, stocks in Asia are are kind of fluctuating. We see the Chinese market had $7.9 billion of outflows in one month. That's massive. Chinese stocks took a massive hit at the start of November and at the end of October. Uh, you know, in Europe, things are just continue to struggle with the war in Ukraine. Uh, so there, there's a lot of tension going on and the market, I think, is just trying to figure out where it's at right now. Uh, and it's trying to figure out all these pieces. When you say this being things are being priced in, 
I don't know that I necessarily believe that completely. I think it's partially true, but I don't think it's completely true because we just really don't know uh, what the future has in store. So now remember, you can vote uh, in our weekly poll question on our YouTube uh, page under the community tab. So if, if you're on YouTube, just go to community our community tab on money and markets uh, and you can see the poll right there. It's gonna be right at the very top. If you're not, go to youtube.com, search money and markets. We've got that bull and bear logo. And then from there, you'll find the homepage, that community tab and the poll. If you have a question about a particular stock or uh, maybe uh, there's something you'd like Adam, Charles or myself to address in any of our our videos. You can email us. The email address is feedback at moneyandmarkets.com. We'll drop that right down below. Love to hear what you have to say. Maybe you followed some stock power uh, guidelines. Maybe you bought some stock power stocks and had some good stories to tell. Love to hear that as well. Just email those to me, feedback at moneyandmarkets.com. If uh, you, you do ask us a question and we do use it in any of our videos, uh, we're going to hook you up with some very cool money and markets gear. We've got hats, we've got t-shirts, we've got sweatshirts. It's getting a little chilly, so that could come in handy as well. Also, head over to moneyandmarkets.com. Sign up for our free daily e-letter. In it, we give you safe sounds smart, simple, and adaptable profitable investment information. We look for profit in any market condition, whether the market's up, whether the market's down, whether the market's sideways, doesn't matter. We are there looking for profitable uh, profits uh, to find for you in any market condition. Check out that proprietary stock power rating system. It powers everything that we do at Money and Markets. You can use the metrics to get the ratings of thousands of stocks. Go to the website, the top right-hand corner of the homepage, just uh, in that search bar, just type in a ticker, company name, and you'll be able to pull down ratings, charts, data, any analysis that we've had on that uh, individual stock. And it's all there for you to use for free at moneyandmarkets.com. That's all for me this week. Until next time, this is Money and Markets Research Analyst and host of the Stock Power Podcast, Matt Clark, wishing everyone safe trading. <laughs>